she has divided me. I can see her from across the street. She's here, but not here somehow. I feel I'm not quite here, like part of me is asleep. In order for you to understand my story, you have to know where I come from. It's all because of her. always take the subway. when time starts to move in the right direction. People stopped to look. Everyone was just staring. I couldn't bear it. I ran to the car, and without even thinking or checking the car for others, I pulled a woman out from the wreck. Passengers of the car, I later found out, were a family of three. The mother, the woman I held, and father had both died, leaving behind a young boy. Had this boy ever come to know how much he was loved by them? Would his past come back to haunt him, or would it dissolve? Forgotten. What I witnessed that day changed me forever. I knew I would never see that boy again, but I'd also never forget. This moment would survive in me. I came out of the subway, 
and time stopped. I know I saw the accident happen, but I only remember the aftermath. And I see her for the first time. There she is, across the street. She's watching me. I'm old now. I can only look back. To be able to only look back is worse than death. The only thing in my future. The only thing to look forward to. This message is the only evidence I have of what happened. I guess I realize that when I die, every memory I have, everything I've felt, the way I see the world, dies too. Every single moment dies with me. That's why I, I wanted you to have this. The day after the crash, I began searching for this woman. I went back to the crash scene. Most of the traces of death had been removed, but there was still the faint scent of rubber and engine oil glass shards left behind. Certain images stand out in my mind from that day, the day that I found her. I remember a gate, a small car, an alleyway, a pregnant woman, old men playing chess, a boy playing near a street filled with people, random images of the city. following her on a daily basis. Such was my fascination with her every move. I could not shake the feeling that I had met her somewhere before. I could usually find her at the market. Sometimes I would walk right up behind her. I don't know what I would have done if she'd ever turned around. She never did. How can you learn about a person by simply following her around? How deep can you possibly expect to go? How can you understand? She seemed to drift through the city like a ghost, rarely communicating with anyone. So I tried to imagine a life for her. Imagine a beautiful past for her. I tried to fill it with all the things you'd expect to find in a photo album, but it was difficult to picture her in any way other than how she appeared to me. I tried to imagine what sort of force brought her to me, 
from me to her. My sleeping and waking hours were filled with thoughts of an imagined past, of who she was, where she was from. I continued to follow her. She liked children. She would often stop to watch them from the boundaries of a playground. It's hard for me to explain to you the look on her face when she watched them. She seemed very alone those times. I wanted to go to her. I could only wonder at what she must have been feeling. Days, weeks, months. She never changed. Always the same clothes. Always the same places, the same faces. track of time following her. Then something new happened. She made her way through the market with a bouquet of flowers. I tried to stick close to her without being noticed. through an industrial part of town now, towards the docks. I watched her get onto a ferry boat. I could have stopped here, but I boarded the boat. I 
I felt the ground give way and start to churn beneath my feet. I heard a clock tower chime out in the distance. Watching the water crash against the hull, I felt different, old. I imagined being swallowed. I made my way to the bow, and there she was. As the water churned below, I watched her until we docked. And I could once again feel the steady ground beneath my feet. followed her to a cemetery. back until she left and then instead of following her I approached the grave I remember feeling slight nausea as I approached some strange apprehension I saw a man watching me to my disbelief I saw that the name on the grave she was visiting was my own The date of birth was 50 years before mine, but it was my name. When I looked again, the man was gone. After that day, things began to change. The subway. This is where I lose her each time. I worry that I may lose her permanently. As I leave, I start to realize something strange is happening. The accident has just happened. I've seen this. I've been here. She's gone. How many times has this happened? Have I lost my mind? Where is she? I 
searched endlessly through all the places I had seen her. She left no trace of herself behind. It was as if she had disappeared from the world. Every now and then I thought I caught a glimpse of her. Your mind becomes fixed on something. When you become dependent on something outside your control, you become desperate when it is lost. And then I saw her. We were going places we'd never gone before. I felt adrenaline surging through my body. I don't know whether I was more afraid of losing her or of her turning and seeing me. I watched her climb the stairs to a door. She went inside, and as quickly as she'd come into my life, she was gone. I felt a strange panic. I made my way up to the door. experience true blackness? I mean, when nothing exists, there is nothing for the mind to latch onto, nothing to pull you out. This is what I experienced when I stepped through that door. Images then began streaming through my mind at an alarming rate. my life now. This is where I am. I don't want you to feel sorry for me, and I don't want to burden you with my troubles. The fact of the matter is, however, that as I leave this message, no doctor can stop it. No one can stop time. Don't try to find me. I'll now answer the questions for you that you most definitely must be asking. I myself was not prepared for what I would find. Is anyone ever really prepared for answers? Long ago, after I'd nearly given up searching, I began to suspect that I was being followed.
This went on for quite some time. And finally, this man approached me in the street. He told me he was a figure from my past. I took him for an eccentric. I told him to stop following me. He gave me a phone number but no name and told me to find him when I needed to know. I was too startled to reply. I kept that number locked away for years. Some part of me simply refused to throw it away. Long ago, while I was preparing to move away, to start fresh, to leave the past behind, I came across the paper with the phone number. Thinking there was no way this number could possibly lead me anywhere at this point, other than to more dead ends, I decided on a whim to call it. Still, I'd be lying if I said I wasn't nervous. click. Someone was on the other end. I couldn't speak. And then, a weary voice on the other end. I knew you'd call, he said to me. I knew you'd need to know. I panicked. I hung up. Everything about this situation was irrational. And how could I live without knowing what he wanted from me? Why had he chosen me? I'd spent so much of my life searching for... Who knows? But the prospect of success was almost more terrifying than dying without answers. In the end, what had I to lose? Who could resist making that call? We arranged a meeting. When he was giving me the directions, either because my memory had faded or I was just too nervous to be aware of it, I'd failed to note the significance of his description of our meeting point. was when it hit me. This was the door. This was where I'd lost her. This was where I'd experienced true blackness.
Walking inside felt like stepping into a time capsule. There were relics and antiques from various time periods. What I remember most are the clocks. There were clocks everywhere. No one clock told the same time as another. All you could hear was the endless ticking of time. sat quietly for some time. We both knew why I'd come. There was no need to hurry. After a while, he looked up at me and took off his reading glasses. He stared into my eyes. He then proceeded to unravel me completely. Do you know what eidetic memory is? He asked. I was a close friend of your father's, your biological father, that is, he then told me. I was a psychologist of some note back then. You have to understand that his referring to my biological father seemed absurd, as I had every reason to believe that the people who'd raised me were my biological parents. I'd never known any differently. I should tell you now, however, to save time later. Regardless of my disbelief, this man had official documents to back up all of his claims, which would only get more upsetting as he continued. I felt like I was that young boy on the curb. He told me that my birth father had died when I was about three years old. He died as a result of a car accident. I had survived this accident. Before his death in hospital, he told this man, this psychologist, about a photograph he wanted me to see, even though I was too young to understand it. You see, my father had some understanding of psychology himself. This picture was to be shown to me in 15-minute intervals every day until my adoptive parents were to take me away. Once they did, they were very specific in stating that in no way was I ever to know my past. As far as they were concerned, my life officially began with them. All materials relating to my biological parents, anything connected to that life were either destroyed or locked away where I could never find them, except for the picture. He told me that sometimes the mind locks away information and the key to unlocking it can come in many different forms. Sometimes that key can be a traumatic incident. Sometimes these incidents parallel our own lives in such subtle, subconscious ways that things come out of our minds that we don't understand because we have no context for them. He told me about the woman my mother was. things before your eyes? Where do they come from? Where are they going? When I held your mother in my arms, 
She whispered to me a secret only a mother can tell to her child. Neither of us has ever really had this luxury. So now I'll tell you myself. Know that your mother loved you very much. She knew she was dying when I held her in my arms that day. She knew she would never see you grow up. She knew she would not get the chance to give you all the love she had. She asked me to tell you. She gave me that responsibility. She wanted you to remember her. She wanted you to know that you were never alone. She wanted to remain alive in you. She gave me that responsibility. All that remained of my mother was a photograph and all of the possibilities that could be imagined by looking at it. The woman in her youth, a woman full of life and love to give. too young to remember.